Goswami well, so I mean, asked a question, Sir, why are you bound like this? Why don't you see God? Nobody wants to see God without any preparation. Sri Ramakrishna said, Well, do you know what is Maya? It is nothing but the egotism of the embodied soul. This egotism has covered everything like a veil. All troubles come to an end when the ego dies. If by the grace of God a person but once realizes that he is not a doer, then he at once becomes a Jeevan Mukta, though living in the body. He is liberated. He has nothing else to fear. <clears throat> this Maya, that is to say the ego, is like a cloud. The sun cannot be seen on account of a thin patch of cloud. When that disappears, one sees the sun. If by the grace of the Guru, once ego vanishes, then one sees God. <coughs> Rama, who was, Rama, who is God himself, was only two and a half cubits ahead of Lakshman. But Lakshman couldn't see him because Sita stood be between them. Lakshman may be compared to the Jiva and Sita to Maya. Man cannot see God on account of the barrier of Maya. Just look, Swami Sri Ramakrishna says in the Gospel, I am creating a barrier in front of my face with this towel. He puts a towel across his face. Now you can't see me, even though I am so near. Likewise, God is the nearest of all, but we can't see him on account of this covering of Maya. The Jiva is nothing but the embodiment of Satchidananda. <clears throat> but since Maya or ego has created various Upadis, he has forgotten his real self. Each Upadi changes man's nature. Again, Sri Ramakrishna tells, if a person wears a fine black border cloth, you will at once find him humming Nidhu Babu's love songs. <laughs> <laughs> then playing cards and a walking stick follow. <laughs> if even a sickly man puts on high boots, he begins to whistle and climbs. He stares like an Englishman, <laughs> jumping from one step to another. If a man but holds a pen in his hand, he scribbles on any paper, he can get it on. He can get hold on. Such is the power of the pen. Nice examples, you know. And money is also a great upadhi. The possession of money makes such a difference in a man. He is no longer the same person. I must have got some money. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it is that way. So they laugh as they are laughing. And of course this example, you know, I, I told you straight, Friday had everything. Yeah. And how it behaved. One can get rid of the ego after the attainment of knowledge. On attaining knowledge, one goes into samadhi and the ego disappears. But it is very difficult. It is very difficult to obtain such knowledge. <coughs> one devotee, Pratap, he said, some women of our country have been to England. This Maratha lady, who is very scholarly, also visited England. Later, she embraced Christianity. Have you heard her name, sir? Sri Ramakrishna said, no. But from what you say, it seems to me that she has a desire for name and fame. That kind of egotism is not good. The feeling I am the doer is the outcome of ignorance. But the feeling that God does everything is due to knowledge. God alone is the doer. All others are mere instruments in his hands. Very nice truth. <coughs> the misfortune that befalls a man on account of his egotism can be realized if you only think of the condition of the cough. This is also a very beautiful example. The cough says, Amma, Amma, that is, I, I, am 
inside. And just look at its misfortune. At times it is yoked to the plough and made to work in the field from sun up to sun down, rain or shine. Again it may be slaughtered by the butcher. In that case the flesh is eaten and the skin tanned into hide. From the hide shoes are made. People put on these shoes and walk on the rough road. Still that is not the end of the misfortunes. Drums are made from its skin and mercilessly beaten it sticks. At last the entrails are made into strings for the bow used in carding cotton. When used by the carder, the string gives the sound tuhu, tuhu, dau, dau. That is, it is dau, O Lord, it is dau. It no longer says Amma, Amma. I, I. Only then does the calf's troubles come to an end. And it is liberated. It doesn't return to the world of action. Likewise, when the embodied soul says, O God, I am not the doer, thou art the doer. I am the machine and thou art the operator. Sakali Tomari Chopar Sangi said. Only then does its suffering of worldly life come to an end. Only then does it obtain liberation. It no longer has to be reborn in this world of action. A devotee asked the question, Sir, how can a man get rid of his ego? Nice question, which is bothering all of us. Master replied, you can't get rid of it until you have realized God. If you find a person free from ego, then know for certain that he has seen God. Sri Ramakrishna said to the Pandit, it is good to live in the company of holy men now and then. The disease of worldliness has become chronic in man. It is mitigated to a great extent in holy company. I and mine, that is ignorance. True knowledge makes one feel, O oh God, you alone do everything, you alone are my own, and do you alone belong to houses, buildings, family, relatives, friends, the whole world, all is yours. But ignorance makes one feel, I am doing everything, I am the doer, house, buildings, family, children, friends and property, they are all, all mine. Once a teacher was explaining all this to a disciple, he said, God alone and no one else is your own. The disciple said, but Reverend Sir, my mother, my wife and my other relatives take very good care of me. They see nothing but darkness when I am not present. How much they love me. The teacher said, there you are mistaken. I shall show you presently that nobody is your own. <laughs> to give that experience, it does. Take these few tablets with you. When you go home, swallow them and lie down in bed. People will think you are dead. But you will remain conscious of the outside world and will see and hear everything. Then I shall visit your home. He says, the disciple followed the instructions. <clears throat> he swallowed the pills and lay as if unconscious in his bed. His mother, wife and other relatives, they started crying, wailing. Just then the teacher came in. In the guise of a physician, like a doctor. In the guise of a doctor he came and asked the cause of their why, why are you crying? When they had told him everything, this guy is the doctor. He said to them, well, here is a medicine for him. You don't have to cry. It will bring him back to life. But I must tell you one thing. This medicine must first be taken by one of his relatives and then given to him. But the relative who takes it first will die. <laughs> I see his mother, his wife and others here. Certainly one of you will volunteer. They volunteer to take, to take the medicine. Then the young man will come back to life. The disciple read all this. 
First the physician called his mother, who was weeping and rolling on the ground in grief. He said to her, Mother, you don't need to weep anymore. Take this medicine and your son will come to life, but you will die. The mother took the medicine in her hand. All of us were thinking probably she may take the medicine. Yeah. But then the mother began to think. After much reflection, she said to the physician with tears in, his, in her eyes, Well, my child, I have a few more children. I have to think about them too. I am wondering what will happen to them if I die. Who will feed them and look after them? So she did not take the tablet. <laughs> The physician next called the wife and handed the medicine to her. She had been also weeping quite bitterly. With the medicine in her hand, she also began to reflect. She had heard that she would die from the effect of the medicine. So after reflection, with tears in her eyes, she said, Well, after all, he has met his fate. <laughs> if I die, what will happen to my young children? Who will keep them alive? How can I take the medicine? All these things. The person heard about all these things. He got up over the effect of the pills. He was now convinced that nobody was really his own jumped out of bed, <coughs> left the place with his teacher. The Guru said to him, there is only one whom you may call your own and that is God. Therefore a man should act in such a way that he, he may have bhakti for the lotus feet of God and love God as his very own. You see this world around you, it exists for you only for a couple of days. There is nothing to it. Again, Sri Ramakrishna said, it is an account of the ego that one is not able to see God. In front of the door of God's mansion lies the stump of ego. One cannot enter the mansion without jumping over the stump. Of course, he as the example of this uh, story of this ghost which I also said yesterday. A person who has, who has acquired the power of, who has acquired the power to tame ghosts and the ghost would say, whatever work you do I will do immediately but you must keep on giving work to me. <laughs> Otherwise I am going to break your neck. So, how, how long can you give work? Finally, that man had to run to the teacher for the remedy to escape, uh, killed by the ghost. Then, of course, the uh, teacher told him, tell the ghost to straighten the kinky hair. The ghost itself devoted itself day and night to strengthening the to straighten in the hair, but how could it make a kinky hair straight? That hair remained kinky. Likewise, the ego seems to vanish this moment, but it reappears the next. Unless one renounces the ego, one does not receive the grace of God. Suppose there is a feast in a house and the master of the house puts a man in charge of the stores. As long as the man remains in the storeroom, the master does go there but one of, one of his own will, he renounces the storeroom and goes away. Then the master locks it and takes charge of it himself. A guardian is appointed only for a minor. A boy cannot safeguard his property, therefore the king assumes responsibility for him. God does not take over our responsibility unless we renounce our ego. <coughs> Of course, Keshav also was having little ego that he was the founder of Brahma Samaj and all such things. 
Sashira.